Well, no, but I, 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 I've been asked by the Minister to present on behalf, on behalf of Rwanda. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, uh, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Stuart McGuinness. I'm the Global Director of, uh, for Nature Based Solutions uh, in IUCN. Um, and we're here today to, um, to share some exciting news with you on a real solid implementation. Often we, often we hear of promises and uh, commitments to do things. Well, this is actually a platform of, of real action and actually undertaking. Uh, action on the ground. So very quickly, uh, in uh, September of 2011, IUCN and the government of Germany co-hosted the Bonn Challenge event on forests, carbon and biodiversity in support of the uh, Global Partnership on Forest Landscape Restoration. The Bonn Challenge was designed not as a new set of commitments but very much as an implementation platform to move ahead and help deliver on existing commitments, including those coming from the Climate Change Convention, and notably Target 15 of the, of the Aishi targets from the Convention on Biological Diversity, which aim to restore 15% of degraded ecosystems by 2020. Um, so today we're here to announce the first round of pledges. We've got actually quite a an exciting, I think, a, a, and diverse group of, a, of countries and stakeholders who, who are going to pledge, and I think actually coming up to a, a significant total. So I'm going to start actually just by handing across to my president, uh, Ashok Kosala, um, to give you a little bit more context of the, uh, on, on, on restoration and what we hope to achieve from that. Ashok. Um. I want to welcome you all. It's um, a, a remarkable journey that uh, we've made in the area of um, forests. Um, restoration and enhancement of forests is something that seems now like a no-brainer. It's, uh, it's pretty well obvious to everyone that it should be done, but until quite recently, people hadn't given much thought to it. But uh, it is one of the seven policy tracks of, uh, that has been identified for the objectives of Rio Plus 20, uh, relating to green economies, and I think it's pretty obvious that uh, the many, many benefits uh, and the very few disadvantages of uh, protecting and restoring and enhancing our forests um, are obvious. In fact, so obvious that I don't really see enough controversy for it to come up in the negotiations in any, any complicated kind of way, but uh, we hope that uh, governments will see this as a major area to, to go with. You know, we do know that um, there is some 2 billion hectares in this um, world, land area of uh, uh, huge magnitude that um, offers opportunities for uh, restoration of forests. And uh, within that, uh, what we've really been trying to do is to find a realistic roadmap uh, to get there. And um, we've decided uh, that um, the Aichi targets basically for forest restoration, roughly 150 million hectares um, would be, by, by the year 2020, would be a very good um, target to set, which I think uh, is something that everybody recognizes is not only being realistic, but adequately bold and ambitious that we, we have a meaningful uh, go at it. Um, we see this 150 million hectares as being the source of many, many jobs, uh, contributing to the economy of the order of 80, maybe more billion dollars uh, to, um, uh, per year to, to the uh, global economy. Uh, so that's a pretty good win situation. And then the win-win situations come from the fact that uh, it has huge impacts on the ecosystem services, it has huge impacts on uh, the, the uh, productivity of the land, uh, and uh, obviously to the economies of communities uh, around them. The landscape restoration also uh, delivers various other benefits to biodiversity conservation, climate change, mitigation, as well as adaptation. Uh, and of course, it combats desertification, which is one of the biggest challenges of all. So one really can only say that um, it's so obvious that we hope people won't miss it. 
and uh, we can go forward with these kinds of targets. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Ash. I just emphasize this point several times, that this now is not just about more promises. This is really about action on the ground. And I'm going to turn to our, our colleague, Elise Golan, Director of Sustainable Development from the United States Department of Agriculture, to announce the, the U.S. pledge. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. The United States is very proud to be able to contribute to the bond challenge and to the goal of restoring 150 million hectares of lost forests and degraded lands worldwide by 2020. The U.S. Forest Service mission is deeply rooted in the restoration and sustainable management of public and privately owned forests ecosystems. As part of that mission, as part of our contribution to the bond challenge, we commit to restore 15 million hectares, that's 36 million acres, of U.S. forest land by 2020. We're hopeful that this is just the beginning and that the U.S. can make a larger contribution given the work underway by many federal, state, and tribal partners, non-government entities, and private individuals who are actively and energetically restoring conditions in forests, rangelands, grasslands, and watersheds across the U.S. I can think of very few or better investments in sustainable development than investments in our forests and watersheds. These investments build the health and well-being of our ecosystems and our communities. I know that for me, when I step out of the negotiating room here in Rio and sit under some of those trees out there, it does wonders for my health and well-being. Um, we, the United States government, United States Department of Agriculture, United States Forest Service, we commend the work of the Global Partnership on Forest Landscape Restoration and the International Union for Conservation of Nature for their outstanding leadership in this endeavor. We are committed to our continued work together to make a difference globally and locally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elise. Um, we will, um, and again, I, I say, that, and, uh, you're going to get a flavor now just of the difference and the diversity of, uh, of, of different pledges. We, um, I'm now going to actually uh, uh, call on uh, Gustavo Sanchez uh, to, uh, to, to give us some indication of, of what uh, Gustavo's group, the Mesoamerican Alliance of Peoples and uh, Forests, are going to, the, the, the work that they're going to do. And uh, Gustavo is going to speak in Spanish. Gracias, Stuart. Eh, amigos de los medios de comunicación, Estamos muy contentos de estar aquí como parte de la Alianza Mesoamericana de Pueblos y Bosques, integrada por organizaciones indígenas y campesinas de Panamá, Honduras, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Guatemala y México. Saludamos esta iniciativa y manifestamos nuestra coincidencia con la misma. Nosotros tenemos un impacto en por lo menos 50 millones de hectáreas de bosques y otros ecosistemas forestales en esta región de América denominada Mesoamérica. Nosotros ofrecemos poner toda nuestra experiencia desde los territorios en construir una estrategia exitosa de recuperación de bosques y ecosistemas forestales, con base en las experiencias que sí han funcionado, pero también aprendiendo de los programas fallidos. Calculamos que en Mesoamérica hay por lo menos 20 millones de hectáreas con potencial para ser restauradas, que requieren ser restauradas, que requieren que se les devuelva su cobertura vegetal. Ofrecemos también toda nuestra capacidad y experiencia en incidencia política en nuestros respectivos países para que nuestros gobiernos se sumen y alineen, reorienten sus políticas forestales para comprometerse con este desafío. Finalmente, señalamos que para que un programa o política de reforestación funcione, se requiere la participación plena y efectiva de las comunidades campesinas e indígenas. La estrategia debe ser sembrar bosques que generen riqueza, que generen empleo, además eh, de servicios ambientales. Eh, estamos convencidos de que si un bosque 
si un ecosistema forestal no es útil para la gente que lo cultiva, que lo cuida, es un bosque destinado a la destrucción. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Gustavo. So there you can see we've got a, we've got a government agency from the Forest Service from the United States pledging 15 million. Um, we have got a, a, an alliance of indigenous peoples from Mesoamerica going to work through a process now with a, to, to, to come up with a, a significant target. I, I'm going to make two more announcements. Unfortunately, we've had some colleagues delayed by traffic here. So uh, one other exciting, and again, shows a variation of, of commitment uh, to this pledge, um, is here in, in, in the Mata Atlantica in Brazil. And the, uh, the Mata Atlantica Restoration Pact are going to pledge 1,065,000 uh, hectares to be restored over the next 10 years. This is going to be done in a dynamic and exciting alliance between government agency, NGOs, and, and the private sector. Um, and we'll be able to put you in detail with some, uh, for, for those of you who are interested in this specific case uh, with, with, uh, with colleagues who can speak more authoritatively on that. The other is, uh, the, the other announcement, um, it, it, and one which I've been actually personally involved with and actually supported uh, the government uh, on, on developing it, is in Rwanda. And you may remember that Rwanda at the start of last year announced uh, an ambitious target to, to restore degraded forest water, land and soil uh, uh, over the next 25 years. Well, today, and unfortunately, our, our colleague, the Minister of Natural Resources, Stanislas Kamanzi, can't be with us, but he has now, um, and, and the government have announced um, what they intend to do to make that real and to contribute to the 150 million hectare target of the Bond Challenge. And Rwanda will contribute uh, uh, 2 million hectares to achieve this, uh, this target. Um, I think the thing that's very interesting with, uh, with Rwanda is that they recognize that in, in delivering the restoration, landscape restoration target, it will be used to help deliver sustainable agriculture, to work towards a low carbon economic development strategy, to ensure adequate water and energy supplies for the, for the population, and to provide new opportunities for rural livelihoods. And just remember, in Rwanda, 80% of the population uh, live on 1.2 hectares at a population density of 400 people per square kilometre. So restoration and landscape restoration is, is about an economic and development imperative for that country. Um, I'm, go I'm going to conclude by handing across to someone who probably needs uh, no introduction at all, but uh, Bianca Jagger, we're very privileged to have as the, uh, as the ambassador for our Plant the, Ple uh, Plant the Pledge campaign. It's a public awareness campaign to raise, uh, to, to raise interest and awareness among the general public on the opportunities that the Bond Challenge presents. And of course, Bianca is also the founder and chair of the Bianca Jagger Human Rights Foundation. Bianca. Thank you. Good morning. Buenos dias. Uh, thank you for attending our press conference. It is for me a privilege and a pleasure to be here as ambassador for the Plant a Pledge campaign to support the Bonn Challenge. Uh, the Bonn Challenge uh, target to restore 150 million hectares of the great land by 2020. This is the largest restoration initiative the world has ever seen. It is wonderful to be back in Brazil again. I was here 20 years ago at the first Earth Summit. Now at Rio Plus 20, there is nowhere left for global leaders to hide on the issue of the continued destruction and degradation of the Earth's ecosystem. It is very exciting to be here with the Plant a Pledge campaign. When we will achieve the target of the Bone Challenge, we will see concrete and tangible evidence of the change to livelihood and ecosystem across the world, not merely in our lifetime, but in years to come, and it will be uh, something that will be important for future generations. The unprecedented restoration pledges that you have heard this morning are great news and are very encouraging indeed totaling 18 million hectares, including the 
pledge that Ms. Elise Golan has made for the United States Department of Agriculture Forest Service, the 2 million hectares by the government of Rwanda and the 1 million hectares by my dear friend Pedro Brancaleon by the, of the Mata Atlantica Forest Restoration Pact of Brazil, a coalition of government agencies, NGO and private sectors partner. We also welcome the commitment of the Mesoamerican Alliance of Peoples and Forests, a forum of indigenous peoples and forest community who together have legal rights of more than 50 million hectares of territorial forests in Panama, Costa Rica, my own native country, Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, and Mexico. We look forward to receiving that pledge. Today's pledges clearly demonstrate that governments and landowners throughout the world are taking the bond challenge target seriously. This is an encouraging beginning as it takes us over 10% closer to meeting the bond challenge target of 150 million hectares by 2020. But this is only the beginning. We still need to persuade governments and others who own or manage land around the world to achieve the goal of this unprecedented initiative by 2020. The Plant to Pledge campaign aimed to do just that. As you have heard by now, Plant to Pledge was devised by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, and is sponsored by Airbus. Each place made by the public at www.plantopledge.com supports a global petition directed at world leaders, which I will personally deliver in my capacity as Plant to Pledge Ambassador to the UN Climate Change Talk COP18 in Qatar this year. So I urge you all, those who are watching us, that we can ensure that governments put a pen to paper on the specifics, where, when, and how to achieve the bond challenges and empower others to do the same. To reach 150 million hectares target, we need people across the globe to add their name to plantapledge.com to generate global awareness for this target. Um, and what I'd like to say is that I was inspired uh, by my 16th of June visit to Tingua Bocain Biodiversity Corridor the other day, which represent everything that Plant a Pledge and the IUCN are trying to achieve. With global climate change negotiation foundry, initiatives like the Plant a Pledge are more vital than ever. Reaching the Plant a Pledge target could reduce the gap between governments carbon emission reductions promise and what is needed to avoid dangerous climate change by 11 to 17 percent. We can make the world a more sustainable place for everyone. We can make the world a better place for our children, our grandchildren, and future generations. With Plant a Pledge, we can take concrete steps towards restoring the landscape in the forested and degraded areas and repair the damage to human lives and the environment. I urge you to go to www.plantapledge.com and click to sign our petition. Help us push land restoration to the top of the political agenda at the Rio Plus 20 Air Summit. This is a unique opportunity to renew our forest landscape now. Our fate and the fate of future generations depend on it. As the Chinese proverb says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bianca. So there we've got it, 18 million hectares pledged now. This is only the start. We will be having a series of other pledging events through several of other uh, large uh, international meetings uh, this year. Um, and indeed, as I say, not only the 18 million hectares pledged, but we'll be working with Gustavo and his colleagues to help uh, support a, uh, and, uh, and identify and crystallize a pledge from the indigenous peoples in Mesoamerica. We've got a few minutes, and I think we, let's take some questions. I would really ask, could we privilege members of the press, please, to uh, ask their questions? So could we take uh, questions from members of the press? Please state your name and the, uh, the uh, press association that you come from. So, colleague over here, please. Uh, Mike, please. Hello. Hello. Uh, 
Renato Grandelli from O Globo, Brazil. Uh, can I make it in Portuguese and maybe is there a translation? Hear. Yes. Hear. Have we got Portuguese translation? Yes, okay, thanks. Yes. Okay. yes, can you hear me? So this is the English booth, just checking sound, okay? So actually I have two questions. The first one is how will this be monitored? the plan to pledge or the pledges made by all these countries, how will this be monitored? The second one is where these two billion hectares that could be restored, where are they geographically? Um, I'll take those questions if there's sort of, okay. Um, basically, this is, a, this, is a, this is a voluntary arrangement to say we're not asking people for new commitments, it's for people who feel the commitments are there, let's start up, set up and, and, a, 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 and, and go ahead and do it. So we will be, the, the Global Partnership for Forest Landscape Restoration will be putting in a, 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 a framework to help a, countries and those people who pledge to report on their action. I emphasize it's not just, this is not some sort of a oversight a mechanism. This is to really help and empower people to work through, to sh I think more important than to, to uh, count and make sure that the pledges are delivered is actually to help different, different colleagues engage in sharing lessons. Again, you've heard from all these pledges, people, jobs, economy, getting things going, those are all at the heart of this, this initiative. So I think there's lots of lessons to share and what we will be trying to do is say put in place a framework that will help track and monitor how this goes, but also to really present an enabling framework for people to share. Where the, where the, uh, the, the two billion hectares are, they're, um, they're, they're right across the globe, but I think particularly we have got, a, and this is what makes it interesting, we have got a whole different range of, of, of uh, biomes from very dry land to the humid tropics to temperate areas. Plant the Pledge and the Bond Challenge is available for everyone. There's not a place around the world where there's not an opportunity really that exists. And I think that's what makes it inclusive and exciting. There's obviously a lot of concentration in some places in particular, Africa, Asia. But I would think the main thing is there are opportunities everywhere, whether it's on degraded land, on unproductive farmland, to actually uh, implement restoration and improve productivity, improve people's livelihoods, and improve biodiversity. Next question, please. No, I'd like to oh, say, sorry, sorry. go ahead. Yes, what I'd like to say um, in response to your question, sir, is off. Yeah, yeah? is that um, two uh, billion hectares is the equivalent to half of the planet, and uh, and in fact. 150 million hectares of land by 2020 is a small uh, area, uh, but it will be very significant and we hope that uh, we will be able to obtain pledges that will exceed the 150 million by 2020. Right. Um, apparently we've only got a couple of minutes, so could I ask two, two people very quickly, could I, this lady, and Richard Ingham, uh, and then we will take questions, we'll grab it here, because we've got to be fair to the next uh, press conference. So, this lady, could you introduce yourself and Richard, please? Um, it's Patrileka Chatterjee, I'm a journalist from India. Uh, what has been the response from Asia? Any governments, NGOs, you know, large populated countries like India, China? What kind of response have you got to your plant pledge campaign from this part of the world? Okay, thank you. Thank and you. Richard? Thanks. Thanks very much, Richard Ingham from the French news agency, AFP. Uh, I'm sorry I just missed the start of this, but uh, where exactly will, the, uh, uh, will this uh, reforestation occur? Can you, can you sort of pinpoint where, they, uh, where, where they'll be taking place? Okay. Um, Ashok, can I turn, turn no, to you? No, you go ahead. Okay. Well, 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 no, I'll, I'll, I will turn to you because I think you actually given some insight in India, but I would, I would just say... We have, we're in discussions with several governments from Asia and other, other groupings as well from Asia and we hope that we'll be announcing pledges later on. Uh, but Ashok, do you want to mention just... Oh. Well, yes, I mean, I don't think the, um, uh, 
densely populated countries like Bangladesh, India, China uh, are uh, going to be ready to make their pledges very quickly, but we know that um, there are lots and lots of degraded lands, and they are often called wastelands, but of course they have some use, and communities make use of them for pastoral and for uh, a variety of other reasons. So they are in need of work like plant planting, planting indigenous species that can renew their uh, productivity. I think we'll be hearing a lot more from those particular countries very soon, but they've got to do some homework because it's really difficult to find anything that's available that's not being occupied. Thank you, Shock. And then just very quickly, I'll just turn to Elise and to Gustavo. Could you just answer very quickly Richard's question of where – we've said globally there's lots of opportunity, 2 billion hectares, but where precisely when, – when it comes to these pledges, mm -hmm. where precisely are we talking about? In the United States, for the next period of time, we're focusing our restoration efforts in 20 uh, distinct uh, forest watersheds across the country, including in tribal regions. Um, and we do have a sophisticated way to measure the restoration efforts. We do uh, measure according to the Montreal process. And so we have just released our second report on the health of our forests using Montreal uh, indicators, which are sustainability indicators. And so that's great. It's really interesting. So we have a baseline, and now we can look at progress. Thank you. Bueno, en Mesoamérica hay muchísimas áreas prácticamente en todas las en todas las regiones que han perdido su cobertura vegetal particularmente en la parte de bosques tropicales. Sin embargo, en muchas áreas también enfrentamos problemas con bosques eh, fuertemente degradados. En el caso de México, estudios eh, del gobierno mexicano estiman que hay nada más en ese país 13 millones de hectáreas con potencial para establecer reforestaciones productivas y plantaciones eh, forestales. Okay, thank you. So, so we will we'll gravitate across to the side of the world, Brian, over over to the side of the room, and we'll make way for the for the for the next press conference. But as I say, we're, we are available now to take additional questions. Obviously, Bianca can talk more on the Plant a Pledge campaign, Gustavo on Mesoamerica, Elise on the United States, and I'll be able to take some questions on Rwanda, and Ashok will be able to talk about the general bond challenge. Okay, thank you.